Hello everybody! Today we're going to see a workflow past production in Lightroom for portrait photography. So let's go to see. Here I am in front of my Lightroom catalog with this photo I selected from shooting I did some weeks ago with Manuela. Um, for this session I'm going to use uh, this picture here and I'm going to show you how I can uh, edit. First thing I'm going to do is like to click on the picture and uh, select create virtual copy. In this way I can work on a different copy of the photo keeping the original as it is. Then I'm going to the develop module and I'm going to click on reset. Clicking on reset are you going mainly to give away all the setting on the picture. And the first thing usually I'm going to do when starting to work on a photo is like to apply a camera calibration profile. And as you can see here, I have many different and uh, Lightroom is going to give me like profile uh, based on the camera. So what are I going to do this camera profile? Uh, mainly I'm shooting, you see here, uh, Fuji X-T2, okay? So rough, rough file is like the um, profile from Fuji. And Lightroom can detect the camera and show me the profile for the camera. So when I'm applying this color profile, for example here, camera Velvia is going to give me the same kind of result as the JPEG uh, shooting directly in the camera. So of course this profile now is too strong. Uh, the camera Velvia is usually intended more for landscape strong color contrast. I'm not going to use Velvia for this picture, as particularly this portrait. What I'm going to use is like classic chrome that is going in a sort of way of emulate the color of the classic Kodachrome uh, uh, film. So the Kodachrome profile usually have a strong uh, contrast. As you can see, the black is really, really close and the dark tones uh, and the shadow are really close. So usually I'm going to open a bit the shadow. Okay, so in this way I can uh, see detail on the on the image. Then next step uh, I can do is like work on the tone curve and the tone curve is mainly aimed to work on the contrast. If you not see the tone curve uh, as a line uh, you have to click on this button because uh, this button usually struggles from the regulation with the normal slider to the normal curve as we have in Photoshop. Usually you just need two points for set the contrast, one on the, we can say, on the shadows point and one on the highlights point. And then when you're going to drag this curve, I'm going to do a small increment. As you can see, I'm going to increase the contrast. And you can see before and after with this little switch here on the, on the right. Okay, so I don't want to have so strong a contrast on the shadow, just a bit more on the highlight. Too much. Okay, something like this. Next step, uh, I'm going to work on the color because uh, I want to give some different color and there are many different ways to work on color because I can work on color with the, the panel here, the HSL. I can work on color even uh, on the tone curve going to work on the different channels. And then another way that uh, I can work on color is with the split toning. So I'm going to use for this picture here uh, particularly the split toning. How is working the split toning or how I'm going to use the split toning? Usually when you have the hue is going to select the color but we cannot see anything. So usually I'm going to increase saturation to 100 and this is of course not what I want uh, on the final picture. 100 is just for now to select the color. I'm going to select a color like uh, this uh, yellow then I'm going to drag this to zero and then I'm going to do the same for the shadow 100 to saturation. I'm going to select let's say for the shadow I want a bluish tone and then when I have uh, everything on zero, I can start to add a bit, uh, as you can see, of bluish tone to the shadows and a bit of warm tones uh, to the highlights. Then with the balance, I can uh, select if going more in the direction of the highlights with the tones, so more yellow or more like uh, cold uh, in the blue on the um, shadow. Okay, I think this is what my regulation is going to be for today. Next step, 
I want to see there is like little little uh, spot on the nose uh, and some uh, little spot even here on the on the hat. So I'm going to show you how to edit and to remove. This is really simple and easy because you can use the spot removal and uh, usually the setting uh, the best one is heal heal especially for skin i can just put a little spot and as you can see it's going to be like uh, removed so i'm putting here one here another one here 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 and here okay Next step I'm going to do is to add a bit of uh, vignette because I want to give uh, more attention here to the center of the of the photo. So what I'm going to use for the vignette? I'm going to use like the um, radial tool. And the radial tool, uh, first thing you have to zero out all the your previous setting. Okay, so double click on the on the slide is going to get everything on zero. And when you just click and drag, you see you you draw this circle. And of course now you cannot see anything because we have not any setting add. Other important thing is like at the moment uh, when you have the option invert mask, uh, this radial tool is going to be applied on the inside of the of the picture. So I want the opposite, I want the outside. So I'm going to remove this invert mask uh, and I'm going to drag the exposure down. And as you can see, I can get a nice vignette. Then I can go on edit uh, this uh, radial and to place uh, where I want. Then with the feather I can decide even to do it uh, more strong contrast or less contrast and then maybe I'm going to remove a little bit. Okay. So honestly for this picture I'm going to stop here. I'm not going to do so much more editing. We can see the before and after okay the button under the esc the backslash so you can see before and after and um, this is the end for today picture and we're going to see with the next one in some days